Lucky Bob. Not so lucky today, are you? You were right. Bob didn't steal the money. How do you know? Nobody that stupid could have got away with it. Welcome back, World Wide Web. Thank you for hanging with us. I'm GW Pometcher. We are at the 19th Annual Melbourne Independent Filmmakers Festival in Melbourne, Florida. If you haven't done it yet, we'd really love it if you go down and hit subscribe. I can wait. You, hit the button. I need this. Hit the button. Thank you. Now that we've done that, we are here and we are hanging with film director John Granger. Uh, John's got a film that's entered in the Loose Ends uh, Film Contest, uh, which is Bagman, it, the multiple films, so the same yeah. name. Um, I understand in that contest, they gave you a script that didn't have an ending. Yeah, uh, it, it, it didn't have an ending. It was, uh, I'd say, like three minutes worth of script okay. or so, and uh, you basically had to write an ending, and the whole thing couldn't be really longer than five minutes. Um, and so... Uh, the, I think for this one, it, the premise was, because they've done it a couple of years now, um, the premise was that uh, I think somebody uh, captures death and um, basically, uh, th like, like some guy escapes death essentially because he's captured it in a bag. And so then you kind of have to, like, and then he like comes back into the scene and sort of like, they're all like, hey, what, why are you still alive? He's like, I, I captured death, you know, and you got to. So you kinda, have to sort of finish the scene. Yeah, you have to finish the scene. How does it end? You know, it's one of those, you know, okay. interesting things, but it's one of those things, like, I'm trying not to give too much away as to our ending or it, anything. It, so, it, yeah. It's okay. By the time they see this, yeah. they will have already missed the film festival. Oh, right? awesome. Okay. And, well, no, they should have been here. Oh, yeah. They should have seen it on the big How screen. How dare you? You should have been here. Let's see. Yes. But they weren't, <laughs> so, uh, but we are. And so he's not, we're going to let him tell us just yet, because we're going to see it. Um, so, how how long have you been uh, an independent filmmaker? Um, probably over five, six years now, or something. And what um, drew you to this? What really pulled you into independent? Uh, well, being like, a filmmaker? yeah, like uh, like many um, you know, kids going through college and stuff like that. I was like doing my uh, AA degree because I didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up, and uh, for me, it was like. Did you ever find it? Because I did. I. Well, that's the thing. I, I, I kind of found film because, like, the last class I took, last last semester of my, uh, my AA, uh -huh. um, just had one more elective to do. And I was like, you know what? I'll try this little studio class, see how it is. thought I'd have some fun with my last class. I did it, and I was like, my gosh, this is really fun. I'm getting to work, <laughs> I'm getting to work this expensive equipment. I'm getting to... Get to you know mess with lights and do this cool stuff. Welcome and to the independent world where now you have to buy that expensive equipment. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, di I didn't know that stuff ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, they don't tell you that in but school. Yeah, yeah um, they didn't tell me that when I started the show either. They just they just said no, you it's, need it's, this. It's one of those things where everybody laughs at you later. They don't you know they don't, they don't laugh out loud. Don't, not in school. Yeah, don't laugh while you're saying I'm going to do this mm -hmm. stuff. No, it's that, the reason why when you called your parents and said filmmaking and they went really, <sighs> they, it was just the. <sighs> yeah, yeah, long, yeah. Long but they wouldn't say anything more. Was, no, 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 no. You had to figure that out on your own. So, what what's been your favorite project up to date? What what have, what have, have you are you working on anything right now? Anything really good? Um, on? yeah, I'm I'm working on some stuff. I, I'm still uh, I'm working with uh, some friends on a film we've been working on for a while called uh, The Grip, which is a feature length uh, action movie. Now you <laughs> you you spoke a little bit about that yeah. in the in the panel downstairs. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been a couple of years that you've been working on yeah, it. Yeah, we're, we're doing it for no budget. That's why it's been a couple of years. It's like, you know, trying to get everybody together. Uh, this is YouTube. So them. every filmmaker out there just went, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, everybody, <laughs> everybody understands. They, they yeah. got it. They got it. Exactly. Um, so give us, like, the, give us the kind of the tagline here. What's the, give us the, the synopsis okay. here. Okay. Um, let, me, let me do the. Pitch it there. Give, do the video yeah. announcer voice. 
in a world where <laughs> I'm sorry, I, 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 I couldn't commit for more than three seconds. Uh, so no, yeah, uh, it's basically a story where the main character Ryan, um, he uh, he's just a you know a normal hitman and stuff, a <laughs> you know, a, a mercenary. You know the guy going out killing people, doing contracts and stuff like that. But you know he's he's kind of got a good moral conscious and stuff. Uh, and then um, this one job just doesn't sit right with him. He leaves, goes away from the job, and then. He, uh, you know, finds love, has a life, settles down. It's the hitman with a heart. Hitman with a heart. It's the hitman with a heart. But then, something goes wrong. His wife that, by gets the way. killed. Oh my. Possibly. I'm Possibly. not sure if that's a detail we should reveal or not. We she don't, might not be killed. Oddly enough, we don't have NDAs because we're, you know, <laughs> we're, we're all working on it together and it's a very, you know, buddy so now, film. But yeah. um, you've been working on this for a couple of years. Yeah. I imagine that the script continues to evolve. Yeah. Okay. Um, and everybody's obviously everybody's working as a, as a, it's a fun project. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how many how many people have you conned into coming on board? Oh man, I don't, I don't know. Your, at this your, point, it's, your, it's, your sales skills have got to be amazing. Come on, do this part. It'll I mean, I, I'm I'm not honestly I'm not directing the thing. I'm I'm the cinematographer for it. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so I, I show up and say, man, I wish I had more light. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for the most part, though, I, th I think we've had over 30-something people That's work on fantastic. this at, at this point. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say, honestly. That's great. And when do you expect to have that wrapped up? Um, probably by next year. By next uh, year? Yeah, I mean, it, like Something completely, we might be able to see here yeah, next year? I'm, I'm hoping so. You're yeah. hoping so? That'd be fantastic. Yeah. You know, film sets are fun places because it's a big room full of, or big space, filled with creative people. Mm -hmm. um, what, is, what is one of those standout moments that you've had maybe in the last year on a film set that just stands out in your mind as this is just, this is why I do this. This is a crazy place. I love being here. There's, there's a lot of moments. Like I've, I've, uh, we had a, a, a boom operator pass out from walking their legs too long and standing there holding a boom pole and then, you know, they and just that was passed it. out, yeah, and then, you know, we've had uh, another moment I was talking about. Um, one of my good friends over off the camera is uh, Bob, uh, Bob Brown, and uh, this guy, like, we, we had to get a shot really low with the tripod, and this is before I had a tripod that could go really low to the ground, and I had to get down to the ground, so he just jumps on the ground, and he's like, okay, set the tripod on me. He jumped on like an anthill and stuff like that. But he's like, still, hurry up, get the shot. Welcome to being a filmmaker in Florida. I'm like, it's a giant ant pile. I'm like, I would have just, you know, not done that shot, maybe done it at a different angle. But Bob was like, okay. Commit commitment to your craft, Bob. Yeah, exactly. Commitment, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, um, all right, well, you know what? We want to have a little bit of fun. Yeah. This is the portion of the show I call this clickbait. Now, you're a young uh, man. You get, See? His eyes. It can tell us at all. You're a young man, you know what clickbait is, those here, here, headlines here, here. that you just can't look away from? Boobies. There you go. See? I got it. Done. It, it, We're it, done. It. That's the shortest episode ever. Um, <laughs> so, we want to ask you just some fun questions. They went to the internet, they looked up a bunch of goofy questions, and um, I'm going to ask you, and we're going to look for that ultimate headline that we can oh, use. Oh, that's going to be terrible. <laughs> so, we're going to start simple, though. We're going to start small. Yeah. What's the ultimate superpower? Ultimate superpower? Invincibility. Invincibility? That's like a lot of superpowers in one. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, yeah we'll give them that. Invincibility, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, okay, well, you know, we've seen that a lot of entries here at Myth are dark stories. Yeah. They're, they're horror-based stories. No one There's, likes to do comedy as much. You know, we got a couple of good comedians yeah, a few, down there, a few, yeah. but we got a lot of dark stuff, right? Yeah. What scares you in the dark? Uh, it's same thing that scares me in the light, spiders. <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah. That's a bad day. I mean, in I'm the not... dark, at least I can't see them. But if I know they're there, you know, that's still terrifying. Do you ever see one in the light and then you swear to goodness you you feel, you feel it later? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's... that's creepy. Or if you see something on screen and then all of a sudden you're like, what? why do I feel something on my see, leg? See, Internet, yeah. you can answer the question. Are spiders psychic? Do they know we're afraid? And then they just I project think, I think that? I think they must know. They, they do. Uh, you're, you're a filmmaker. By definition, you're a film viewer. You're a film yeah. fan. Yeah. Okay. Favorite film of all kind of all time. Oh, that's that's a tough one. I've got like a top ten list, sort of, but like I, I'd say probably my favorite film of all time is Starship Troopers. Really? Yeah. It, it actually surprisingly holds up as far as like CGI. And it all that it stuff really goes. does. It, it um, for its 
for its time, the CGI was like unheard of. Yeah, the amount it, that they were. But able like, to I mean, do. you know, you go back and watch a lot of other movies; it doesn't hold up as well and nope. stuff. And like that, that one, actually, I, one of my favorite science fiction shows of all time. The, the CGI is the one thing that doesn't make it, doesn't make the cut. I'm a huge Babylon Five fan. Oh, the CGI was groundbreaking, but it doesn't hold up today. You could yeah. do the same stories. And it holds up better in your mind. Though. It does. Oh, yeah, because it's, I, I yeah. love to see it in my mind, but I look back at it and I look at it as a, from a filmmaking perspective and I go, you know, script is great, production is great. For what? For the fact that it was an early 90s production, yeah. um, it's CGI, which is nobody was doing it. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. uh, all I can remember, guys, I, I'm old enough to remember The Last Starfighter, the CGI <laughs> yeah. from The Last Starfighter. Yeah, I okay. remember that movie. Yeah, I, remember I, that. I watched it not long ago. See yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Great film. I love that film. But, it's the, awesome. but, the, but it, it's like watching a video game. Because yeah. the CGI just isn't there. Yeah, it's one of those things though too, where some sometimes if the CGI is bad enough, and, and like you know the quality of the film is bad enough, it all kind of blends together just to merge a little bit. Out, Especially yeah. on the older films, you yeah. know, like, it, like I, I like it when it's like that, where it's it's, it's that good enough. It gets blend. campy. It gets yeah. after a certain amount of time when it gets dated, it gets yeah. campy and it gets fun. Yeah, it really exactly. does. Yeah. Um, I, I, I got to wrap it up. I, apparently, we were just chatting and talking. and I'm, I'm sorry. We doing, I see what we it have. I don't, it does. It does. Okay, well, we're going to wrap it up. So let's say thank you to our partners and our friends over at Some Unique Magazine, Space Coast Comics, Wordfire Press, Famous Faces and Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason, Heather, uh, <clears throat> Heather Reed over at Asylum Conventions and Entertainment Services. Thank you guys for sharing these videos all over the World Wide Web, helping to share our fantastic creators and filmmakers. I'm GW Pometer. We've been hanging with John Granger, the director of one of this year's Bagman films. And other and sundry, we're going to throw some links down below so that you can find John on the web. Stalk him. He likes that. He really does. He wants you guys to find him. Send him a message. Totally. Say do, hi. Do, do that. Remember, too, to subscribe here on this channel, right here, right there, that little red. It's over there somewhere, I think. Anyway, subscribe, hit that button, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Lucky Bob. Not so lucky today, are you? What do you guys think? Think we'll actually find what Lucky Bob stole? It depends on if he really stole it or not. It's never proven that he stole it. Could have been any one of us. Just saying. Well, he's beyond asking. Enough, Melody, enough. I thought you took care of him. What the hell is this? Death. A bag of snakes? Some kind of animal? Are you trying to give us rabies? Ain't no animal. That there be death himself. Hey, I can't figure out if this guy's more lucky or just flat out crazy. Crazy, lucky, it doesn't matter. How are you even still alive? That bullet hurt so bad, I jolted enough to bust those ropes around my wrists. And if Drew had bothered looking back, he would have seen me pushing myself up. You didn't check? I took that bag off my face just before he came. Death. But he came just a wee bit too early. He reached for me. I snatched him up instead! Right now, I brought him back here for y'all. Didn't look back, huh? Look back on this. <laughs> I told you! Death can't come for me! I 
got them tied up in that there bag. But death has to come for someone else. The only mystery here is who in this room will he be choosing? I don't believe any of this. Open the bag. Prove me wrong. Open it. No way. I just saw him take a bullet point blank. He barely flinched. I'm a believer. Nothing. You got any more fairy tales for us, Bob? Tell me that he's dead because I let death out of that bag? Uh-huh. Well, if that's true and death got the soul that he needs to go home, I guess he's back in business. Well, I, um... Uh, I suppose... Damn. You were right. Bob didn't steal the money. How do you know? Nobody that stupid could have got away with it. Then who did? I don't know. Maybe Death knew and decided to lend a hand. After all, I am one of his biggest suppliers. <laughs> Thank you.